Hello friends and welcome back. It is a cold rainy day. Actually, it's been raining here all week and it's cold. Um, it makes me want comfort food. Fall time comfort food and yeah, these are recipes that my kids grew up loving. Actually, I posted that I was going to make this on Facebook. My oldest daughter immediately commented, I love your bread bowls. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the bread bowls and that is two cups of sifted flour and one package of active dry yeast. I'm gonna mix those together and I use the quick rice yeast and I'm gonna set that aside and in a saucepan I'm gonna heat up two and a fourth cups of milk, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of butter, you could use shortening if you want, and about a teaspoon of salt. So what you're gonna wanna do is like I said, slowly heat it up and until the butter is almost melted, not completely, but almost. That's when you're gonna wanna pull it off and add it to your flour yeast mix. And I add it in there slowly, you don't have to, that's just how I do it. And I'll add a little bit, mix it in, and add a little bit more, mix it in until it's all combined. And once you get all of the milk mixture mixed in there, you're gonna want to pull out your electric mixer, either a hand mixer or uh, any other type of mixer, or you could do it by hand if you want to. So I'm gonna use my hand mixer today and um, basically you just wanna mix it until it's combined with the mixer, making sure the sides are all scraped down and everything's being incorporated and then once it's really mixed well together then you're gonna want to time it um, it's gonna you want it to be about three minutes uh, on high on your highest setting of your mixer and it's just gonna activate that yeast the heat with the combination of the little bit of sugar uh, and the mixing it's gonna activate that yeast once you get that mixed up for three good minutes, then you're gonna want to add about another four cups, uh, four to four and a half cups. You, you'll have to kind of judge if it's enough flour or not. You don't want too much flour, but you don't want too little flour either. So altogether, you're gonna want about six and a fourth cups. So I would suggest taking your jewelry off because you're gonna wanna use your hands for this. So I'm just gonna mix it up as best I can. Um, again, I do it a little bit at a time, add a little bit of flour and mix it in. Um, at some point, I'm gonna go ahead and dump it on the counter and just mix as much of that flour as I can in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and knead my dough for about five minutes and you're basically going to want it to be a stiff dough that's still pretty elastic-y. So once I get it to that point, I'm going to form it into a ball and I'm going to put it in a greased bowl and I'm going to cover it and set it somewhere warm where it can rise. Um, usually takes about an hour with the quick rise yeast. So um, like I said, I'm just gonna cover it. I'm gonna put it on my stove since my oven is on and just let it warm and double in size. Okay, so once that dough has doubled in size, it is ready. So I'm gonna punch it down and let it rest for about 10 minutes. I just let the air out of it. In the meantime, I prepared a cookie sheet, because that's what I'm gonna use. I just greased it. And I'm gonna divide my dough into two pieces. Now, if you want smaller bowls, I would divide this into four pieces. So I'm gonna shape them into round balls and place them on my cookie sheet, my greased cookie sheet, and I'm gonna cover those and let those rise. And once those have risen and doubled in size, then they're ready for the oven. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop those into a 375 oven for about 40 minutes or until they're golden brown. Once they come out all golden and my house smells amazing because there's nothing better than the smell of homemade bread, I will tell you. 
then I'm going to add some melted butter on top and I'm just gonna go ahead and set those aside and let those cool. Okay, while those bread bowls are cooling, I'm gonna cook an entire pack of bacon until it's crispy. While it's cooking, I'm going to chop up some onions, about a cup of onions and about three stalks of celery. And when my bacon is done, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions and celery to that bacon grease and cook those until they're nice and caramelized and just smell amazing. While those are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and dice seven russet potatoes that have been peeled. So my potatoes, I'm gonna cook those in four cups of water with four teaspoons of chicken bouillon and add my potatoes to that. And I'm gonna keep a close eye on my onions and celery and I want them caramelized and clear, but I don't want them overcooked. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of butter, real butter, and one bay leaf to my potatoes while they boil. And once they're softened, I, I can check them with a knife and see if they're soft. I'm gonna remove that bay leaf and I'm gonna add my celery and onions to my potatoes and I'm gonna add the bacon grease too. So if you're health conscious, you don't have to use bacon grease, you can use olive oil or any kind of oil you want and remove it and just add the veggies to it. Um, I want the bacon grease in there for the flavor. So I'm gonna measure out one and a half cups of half and half and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour to that and whisk it together. So this is gonna prevent that flour from getting lumpy when I add it to hot soup. If you add it to cold, it won't get lumpy, it'll be nice and smooth. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Now I'm adding half and half to my soup because it's hot and half and half won't curdle, but milk will. So do keep that in mind when you're adding uh, dairy to a hot soup. So I'm gonna also add about a teaspoon of salt and pepper and really I don't need a lot of salt because of the bacon grease and the bacon. It adds a lot of salt to it, but I am gonna add, I'm gonna crumble up about four pieces of bacon in my soup and mix that all together. And I gotta tell you, the bacon grease adds so much flavor to this. So I'm gonna grab a separate bowl and cut the tops off of my bread and that separate bowl I'm just gonna use to take out all the innards of my bread and put it in that bowl. And you could sprinkle that on top of your soup if you wanted. Um, I'm just gonna crumble a little bacon on top of mine. You could add cheddar cheese or sour cream or chives or green onions or whatever you want. Okay, so now that we've got dinner taken care of, time to make dessert. So I'm gonna start with a 29 ounce can of pumpkin one cup of packed brown sugar and three eggs. I'm gonna give that a quick mix and then I'm gonna add three fourths cup of half and half and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Mix that up really well. Make sure those eggs are really well combined in there and then I'm gonna put it in a greased baking sheet and I'm gonna add some dry cake mix. Now I'm using a spice cake. You could use a yellow cake if you chose. So I'm gonna add also uh, about a cup and a half or so of almond slices. Pecans would be really good too. So I'm also gonna add half a cup of melted butter right on top and I'm gonna pop it in the oven, 350 oven for about half an hour. This is so, so good. It tastes like pumpkin pie with a crunchy top. It's so good. So anyway, you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.